Turkish friends, welcome to my uh, December wrap up uh, part one. In this video, uh, I will talk about uh, the nine works, uh, three of them being uh, short stories, uh, that I finished in the first 14 days of December. Uh, I will mostly talk about the works uh, that I uh, read for uh, the Christie's Missing Readathon, uh, but there are some other uh, works that were a carryover uh, from the previous month. Uh, like I did in my previous wrap-ups, uh, I will insert the clips uh, that I recorded uh, after I finished those works. Today is the 1st of December and I finished the novella that I was listening for two days, uh, which was called uh, The Agony Column by Earl Dorr Biggers. I became aware of this uh, mystery novella when I watched a video of Mark uh, whose channel name is Book Time with Elvis, when he talked about uh, Friday freebies. Because this novella is available on Gutenberg project, uh, he advised uh, this uh, one. And this novella is written by the author of uh, uh, the Charlie Chan mystery series. In this mystery, a man who is very fond of reading the agony column in the 1910s, and he becomes uh, attracted uh, to uh, this lady who says that uh, she is very fond of romance and mystery. So he makes a plan to impress uh, this girl and, uh, and promises to write uh, seven letters in seven days without revealing his name. Uh, uh, and the girl uh, finds this very intriguing, of course. I think uh, from the first letter, uh, he uh, talks about uh, why this American uh, man uh, came to England and his relations uh, with the uh, neighbors uh, in the apartment that he rented. And as the letters uh, do come by, the girl who's also an American uh, becomes uh, very, very uh, interested in uh, this man's uh, story. And uh, in the third letter, things turns out very, very interesting, including a murder. Uh, first of all, I really want to thank Mark uh, for uh, making me aware of this very interesting novella. Uh, I found uh, the writing style very, very uh, approachable uh, and also uh, very uh, clear and uh, the idea of uh, telling uh, a mystery story through letters, uh, I think it was a very uh, novel idea. Uh, considering that it was written during 1916. I also really uh, did like the structure of the mystery, uh, aside from uh, being told uh, from the uh, letters. I really did wish uh, that I had not guessed the uh, plot twist uh, correctly and became more surprised in the end, but still I thought it was a uh, very, very uh, decent uh, novella. Uh, so in summary, I gave uh, the Agony Column by Elder Biggers, an 8 out of 10. Today is the 3rd of December and uh, I finished uh, three works today, one novel and uh, two short stories that I read for the Christie's Missing Readathon. First of all, I want to talk about the novel that I finished, which was an e-art that I received uh, from the Book Sirens website, A Duke's Daughter by Catherine Buckley. In this historical romance book, Emily is the daughter of a deceased uh, duke and her cousin, who is the current duke, uh, falls uh, through uh, hard times financially. Emily decides to accept uh, his offer of her marrying to uh, a rich but a low-bred uh, man uh, in order to secure both of their finances. Thus, uh, Emily marries Ambrose Hawkins, uh, who is rumored to be uh, a pirate at one time. Uh, as they uh, struggle uh, to overcome uh, their differences, a murder charge affects and their growing fondness for each other. I really did like uh, the writing style of the author. I think she managed to uh, create uh, very uh, three-dimensional characters, uh, which is uh, not very common in uh, historical romance books, actually. As much as I love that genre, I have to admit that. So it was a, a fresh uh, take on uh, the character uh, aspect. And I truly believed uh, in the gradually growing fondness of the uh, characters who are very different uh, from each other. On the other hand, the mystery aspect, which should have been a side plot, felt a bit dragged uh, and uh, especially in the middle uh, section of the book, 
uh, I felt like we were losing the uh, main genre of the book, which was romance. After the mystery wrapped up, the execution of the happily ever after was uh, perfect. All of these missed feelings, I gave uh, a Duke's Daughter by Captain Buckley a 7 out of 10. In the first day of uh, the Christie's Missing Readathon, uh, I finished uh, two short stories uh, for the short story prompt. I read uh, the first uh, short story also for the Christie Fest, uh, which was the mystery of the Christmas pudding. In the Circle Poro short story, Hercule Poro is invited uh, to a traditional Christmas celebration in which uh, a mysterious um, theft and a murder happens. Uh, this uh, short story was one of the earlier short stories which featured Hercule Poirot and uh, I really uh, did like how the mystery was structured uh, in a few pages. And I also uh, did enjoy the twist in the end. I think it's a great sample of uh, a short work uh, if you want to know uh, how uh, Agatha Christie wrote in 1920s and 30s especially. So I would strongly advise you to uh, read this uh, short work uh, if you want to know more about Agatha Christie. Uh, so in summary, I gave uh, The Adventure of the Christmas Pudding by Agatha Christie an 8 out of 10. And the second uh, short story that I finished uh, for the Christie's Missing Readathon uh, was the short story that featured uh, my directive. As I mentioned in our previous video, uh, I'm the uh, team captain of Team Marple. Uh, and uh, this was the first uh, short story that featured Miss Marple, the Tuesday Night Club. The short story belonged uh, to the uh, short story collection of The 13 Problems. Uh, this short story was shorter than the other one and uh, it also had an introduction uh, part uh, in which we are introduced uh, to the members of the uh, Tuesday Night Club, uh, one of them being, of course, uh, the uh, quiet and uh, very clever Miss Marple, uh, the aunt of uh, the famous writer Raymond West. And in the second section, we are introduced an event that happened uh, during an investigation of a police director. The remaining members of the club uh, tried to solve uh, the mystery. I read uh, the short story with a smile on my face all the time, how initially uh, Marple is uh, uh, ignored by everyone and she is not even asked uh, if she solved the mystery or not. Because she is uh, overseen by many, she can hear and sense a lot of things. Uh, and uh, that's the common theme uh, throughout all of the books in her series. But uh, this short story is uh, so short uh, that uh, we are not able to uh, get into the story as much as we did in the previous short story that I read. So I gave The Tuesday Night Club by Agatha Christie a 7 out of 10. Uh, today is the 8th of uh, December and I finished uh, Six Against the Art by the Detection Club. Uh, this book uh, was the book that I chose for a Golden Age author and uh, it included uh, short stories from six uh, Golden Age uh, authors who are the members of the Detection Club. And the book had a very interesting premise. Six of the authors in the Detection Club uh, wrote short stories including their version of A Perfect Murder. And uh, after each short story, a retired uh, inspector uh, from Scotland Yard uh, evaluated uh, if the short stories did, in did indeed include perfect murders or not. So this uh, book was a very uh, interesting reading experience for me. And the book included uh, short stories by uh, Marguerite Ellingham, uh, Father Robert Knox, uh, Anthony Barclay, Russell Thorndike, Dorothy L. Sayers, and Freeman Wills Crofts. And I rated each short story individually uh, as I finished them. Overall, uh, I really did like the general idea of the book very, very much. And, uh, and I was very curious to find out what the retired inspector would say about those murders. I thought uh, some of them were very close to perfect murders, whereas uh, I had doubts about some others, uh, but I didn't rate the short stories considering if they co had uh, perfect murders or not. The main uh, concern uh, was the writing style and uh, my enjoyment level uh, when I read these short stories. 
In this collection, I rated the first short story, It Didn't Work Out by Marguerite Ellingham, 7 out of 10. The second short story, The Fallen Idol by R Father Robert Knox, 8 out of 10. The Policeman Only Taps Once by Anthony Berkeley, 9 out of 10. A Strange Death of Major Scallion by Russell Thorndike, 8 out of 10. Uh, Blood Sacrifice by Dorothy L. Sayers, 9 out of 10. The Parcel by Freeman Wills Crofts, 8 out of 10. And my average rating amounted to 8.1, which of course translated as 8 out of 10 uh, for the whole book. As you can guess uh, from uh, my ratings, uh, I enjoyed each short story. Uh, I gave a 7 out of 10 to my least favorite. I can clearly see that the members of the detection club took their jobs very, very seriously uh, because they were all impressive uh, works of short fiction. So in summary, I can say that even though I knew that uh, I would like this book, I did not know that uh, this book would be such a huge success. And I'm very glad uh, that I discovered the detection club through this readathon. Today is the 10th of uh, December and I finished one book uh, last night and uh, finished a short story this uh, morning. The book that I finished last night was the group book for the Christie's Missing Readathon. I reread uh, And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. Uh, this is uh, my uh, favorite uh, closed circle mystery for sure and certainly in my uh, top three mysteries of all time. In this book, 10 people are invited uh, to an island. Uh, where uh, the uh, manor of the house uh, seems to be missing. And at the night that they uh, arrive at the house, uh, a gramophone uh, recording uh, accuses all of them uh, for murder and they all uh, start to die one by one in accordance uh, with the nursery rhyme, Tell Little Indians. Like I said in the beginning of the clip, I just adore this book. It was such a delight to reread. Uh, this book knowing the ending uh, and uh, how Agatha Christie uh, structured uh, her uh, story without missing any loose threads. I found uh, the uh, introduction uh, and uh, the way the characters were handled according to their importance uh, in the book uh, very uh, professionally too. Uh, although this book uh, has a very dark mood and uh, sometimes uh, becomes uh, very close to thriller, I think the mystery aspect of it is so powerful that it never ceases to amaze me. And the antagonist in the book uh, is, uh, I think, one of the most cleverest and uh, cold-hearted uh, antagonists uh, that I've ever read in a book. So in summary, of course, I gave I and then there were none a 10 out of 10. And I think it was the perfect group book uh, for uh, our readathon, uh, which could cover uh, many of the prompts as well. The short story that I finished uh, today uh, was a short story that I received for free when I became a subscriber of the author, which was uh, Lock the Room Library uh, by Gigi Pandia. This short story uh, was first featured in July and August uh, 2021 issue of Ellery Queen Mystery Magazine. And the short story is heavily influenced by John Dixon's Cars, uh, another short story in which uh, supernatural things happen in a uh, locked room library. Also, uh, it was sort of like a, a love letter to all the Golden Age mystery authors because the present uh, time uh, library uh, is a library for uh, mostly for the classical mystery uh, works. Uh, our heroine works in the library. Some unexpected things happen uh, in that library too. Uh, our heroine and her best friend uh, try to solve uh, the mystery of the locked room library. I gave uh, this short story a 7 out of 10. Uh, I actually liked the mystery a lot, but the story was uh, too short for my taste. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because of this shortness, uh, none of the characters were fully developed. But I like the author's integration of ethnic elements into the story. And I plan to read uh, more uh, from uh, Gigi Pandian uh, in the future. Uh, she is the author of uh, 
very enjoyable and light-hearted mystery series uh, which I think uh, will be much better than this very very short story. Today is the 11th of December and I finished uh, Marple 12 New Mysteries, a short story collection written by 12 women mystery authors. In all of the 12 uh, mystery short stories, uh, Miss Marple was of course the central character and the authors wrote uh, a Miss Marple uh, mystery short story using their own uh, techniques and their own influences. I will not go into the detail of all of the short stories because I already made a reading blog about uh, the individual uh, short stories which I will link down below. When I look at uh, the individual ratings of the short stories, uh, I gave Evil in Small Cities by Lucy Foley 6 out of 10, uh, The Second Murder at the Vicarage by uh, Wal McDermott 6 out of 10, Miss Marple Takes Manhattan by Elisa Cole 5 out of 10, the Unraveling by Natalie Haynes, 8 out of 10. Miss Marple's Christmas by Ruth Ware, 8 out of 10. Uh, the Open Mind by Naomi Alderman, 6 out of 10. A Jade Empress uh, by Jane Kovac, 8 out of 10. Uh, A Deadly Wedding Day uh, by Dreda Say Mitchell, 6 out of 10. Uh, Murder at the Villa Rosa by Ellie Griffiths, 7 out of 10. Uh, the Murdering Sword by Karen McManus, 9 out of 10. Uh, the Mystery of the Acid Soil by Kate Moss, 7 out of 10. And lastly, I gave The Disappearance by Lee Bardigo, 5 out of 10. I had uh, very different opinions about each of the story, but a special guest will sum up my thoughts about uh, the book in general. I listened to uh, the uh, short story collection Marple 12 New Mysteries. And uh, I have to say I enjoyed all of the stories, but I enjoyed some of them a bit uh, more. Uh, and there were some uh, stories uh, which I thought uh, understood me better. Uh, they were uh, the stories by uh, Ruth Ware, Natalia Haynes, uh, Jane Kovac, and especially Karen McManus. Uh, I, I, I completely pictured myself uh, getting into adventures uh, written by them. Also really enjoyed my part uh, uh, as an advisor in Murder at the Villa Rosa, even though uh, that story was not a mystery. And unfortunately, I was not very fond of two stories, which were Miss Marple takes Manhattan. Uh, what am I doing in Manhattan? I don't know. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure I can cope uh, being in Manhattan. And the disappearance uh, was uh, very annoyed uh, with uh, what they did uh, to my uh, dear friend Dolly. Other than that, uh, I thought uh, it was a, a decent book uh, where you do not expect uh, my stories to be written by a uh, great Agatha Christie. Because she was a dear friend of mine who knew me really well. But uh, I also want to uh, thank these young ladies for their effort. It's really such a privilege uh, to be uh, the star of their stories too. Today is the 14th of uh, December and it is the last day of uh, the Christie's Missing Readathon. And I finished uh, the last book uh, that I planned uh, to read for the Readathon, which was uh, Murder at the Vicarage by uh, Agatha Christie, of course. I read this book uh, for the prompt of a book featuring my detective, uh, which was Marple. Uh, I want to thank all of you who joined uh, Team Marple. And uh, even though I have never been a competitive person, it was great to lead the team. Anyway, Murder at the Vicarage uh, was the first novel in the uh, Miss Marple uh, mystery series. Uh, in this uh, first full-length uh, work, uh, Miss Marple helps the policeman and uh, the narrator of the book, uh, the vicar, uh, to uh, investigate uh, a murder that happened at the vicarage, of course. 
this was uh, the second time that I'm reading this book. And uh, I gave uh, the book uh, four stars uh, when I first read it. Uh, even though I did not uh, change my rating, uh, I looked at uh, my Goodreads review uh, at that time, which I did uh, 10 years ago. And it said that uh, I really did not like uh, the all-knowing uh, Smarpel, which I read uh, very, very curiously, because in this reread, I kind of understood why Miss Marple acted uh, so subtle and uh, tried to be uh, quiet about intuition before connecting the details. So uh, it showed uh, my uh, view that uh, as, I, as I got older, I understood uh, Marple uh, much, much more. Also in this book, I found a wit uh, that I had not discovered uh, before. The narrator, uh, Wicker, uh, was a very witty person and he used irony as a source of wit which is my favorite type of wit in books i truly enjoyed uh, this uh, book upon a reread too and uh, just because the mystery was not as solid as some of our books uh, i didn't change my rating and uh, gave murder at the vicarage an eight out of ten so this was uh, the uh, total of nine works uh, uh, three of them being short stories, of course, that I finished in the first 14 days of December. Uh, please comment down below. Have you joined uh, the Christie's Missing Reader Talk? And also, have you read any of the works that I mentioned in this video? And if you're a new viewer, first of all, welcome. Uh, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you very soon. Bye. For Turkish word of the day, I'm going to choose locked. Locked means kilitli in Turkish and kilitli is our Turkish word of the day. Have a good day.